Good morning, everyone. I'm Max Valentine, and today we're going to take a look back at one of the deadliest and costliest hurricanes we've ever seen, Hurricane Andrew. Now, Hurricane Andrew caused many deaths, 65 to be exact. However, many of the deaths were not directly from the hurricane. Authorities divided the deaths into two different categories, direct and indirect deaths. Direct deaths generally happened during the hurricane itself. Indirect deaths involve things such as accidents with power outages, electrocutions, and cleanup accidents. Some examples of the direct deaths are 12-year-old Naomi Browning in her South Dade County home when a beam fell on her in her bedroom. 49-year-old Vidal Perez and 74-year-old Francisco Sospedra were thrown from their storage trailer in Miami where they seek shelter. Many people were crushed in the debris and rubble from their home. Many people got in car accidents. Many people were blown out of high windows, etc. Four meteorological factors aggravated the devastation when Hurricane Andrew hit South Florida. First, the completed replacement of the original eyewall by an outer concentric eyewall while Andrew was at sea. Secondly, very fast storm translation caused the eye to cross the populated coastline before the influence of land could weaken it considerably. Thirdly, extreme wind speed. And fourth, formation of an intense but non-tornadic convective vortex in the eye wall at the time of landfall. On August 16, 1992, in the tropical Atlantic Ocean, a tropical wave formed Hurricane Andrew. It moved west to northwest and stayed weak for several days because of strong wind shear. After passing through the Bahamas, Andrew made landfall near Homestead, Florida as a Category 5 hurricane uh, on August 24, 1992. The storm continued all the way to August 28, 1992, meaning that the storm went on from August 16, 1992 all the way to August 28, 1992. Areas that were impacted included Florida, the Bahamas, Louisiana, the southern United States, and South Florida. However, South Florida was impacted the most, especially the Miami-Dade County. I mean, we all watched everything on TV for days at a time, thinking it was not going to hit us, and all of a sudden it made an abrupt 90-degree turn and came straight for Miami. All right, so now we're going to give you guys a little timeline of the hurricane. All right, so August 16th, 1992, we have a tropical wave born off the coast of Africa. Here we have a quote. It says, it moved off the west coast of Africa wave, uh, dot, 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 past south of the Cape Verde Islands. Uh, August 22nd, 1992, upgraded to a hurricane, Category 4. And then August 24th, 1992, temporary weakening of the storm, uh, moved westward, weakened to 941 millibars, but it did re-intensify as it moved over the Gulf Stream on the approach to Florida. Um, then we have August 24th, 1992, and we have this image right here. And basically this image shows Andrew as it was beginning to make uh, landfall. Um, its lowest central pressure was 922 millibars near uh, Homestead Air Force Base, and its maximum sustained wind speed estimated at 125 knots, which is 145 miles per hour, with gusts near 150 knots, uh, which is 175 miles per hour. And then August 26th, 1992, Hurricane Andrew strikes twice, landfall in Louisiana, and uh, yeah. After striking Florida, Andrew moved northwest across the Gulf of Mexico to make a second landfall in the sparsely populated area of South Central Louisiana as a Category 3 storm on August 26th. It caused 23 direct U.S. deaths and 38 indirect deaths. There were 25,524 destroyed homes, and there were 101,241 uh, homes that were damaged. The hurricane resulted in 65 deaths, 15 immediate deaths in Dade County, Florida, 8 in Louisiana, and 3 in the Bahamas. As the NHC's report states, the direct loss of life from the hurricane seems remarkably low